Hey guys, so in episode one, I covered the basics of what the knobs and buttons do and how to actually get things started. Four, one, two, three, four. And you always want to queue up on the one. In lesson two, I showed you how to get two tracks in time and do your first ever basic mix. It's just an addition right now, until... Now, let's expand on mixing, making those mixes even better and getting creative. Okay, so I wanna show you guys how to find the breakdown on a track visually. I mean, I suggest learning all your tracks and knowing every song that you're gonna play. That is what I do. Um, I make sure that when I have a new track, I listen to it at least three times so that I know where it's going and what it's about and where it will sound, sound best. Um, but visually, if you've only heard this track, you know, one time and you're playing a set in Vegas and, you don't, and someone re It will help to have visual indicators. This is not always correct, but I'd say 90% of the time correct. So when you look at the, this is called a waveform on, on, on the CDJs, and it actually shows the, the makeup of a track, basically visually for you. When it looks more intense, it's usually when the beat is the strongest. And then when it goes back down and kind of lulls in shape, it's usually where a breakdown is. And it's usually in the middle or towards the end of a track. I'm guessing that this is where the breakdown is. I, it looks like a breakdown and I'm pretty sure I'm right, but. I, okay, that is what a breakdown is. Chills out, it's a bit of space before the beat comes in. So let's, let's cue it. So now you can hear the breakdown. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix into the breakdown. I'm just gonna skip a little bit, but I can see where the breakdown's coming because of that little lull in the waveform. So, just jamming out. I can see it coming. Two, three, four. This is a great way to mix out. Now the new track will kick in. You know what I'm saying? It obviously will be a little bit more climactic when you're using a non-royalty free track, but it's the same sentiment. And that's a very clean way how to mix into another track. One thing that I'm sure every DJ has done at a show is uh, they're doing a really sick mix and they're really vibing and they did not check their volumes and they didn't make sure that both tracks were at similar volumes. And when they drop the next track and it you know, gets there, it's quiet as hell. I can show you what I mean. I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna actually, we're gonna start with this track because it's the, the less strong track. So I'm gonna show you like how weak a stronger track can sound if it's way softer. I'm so sick of this sound. <laughs> See how I've turned the volume? This is the main volume of the track down. So it's only at kind of like half the amount. So I haven't checked my volume and I'm about to do this crazy mix. Let's go! Well, that's not good. So you want to kind of make sure they're matching volumes. And also if something comes in way too loud, it always sounds really clumsy too. So just make sure that you use your ears. The best tool you guys have as DJs are your ears. So I'm going to start this track. This is going to be the first track, AKA when I say first track, it's the track that people are listening to outwardly. 127 BPM. This next track is 127 BPM. I've moved it to there. I've adjusted it because it was originally 124. We're just gonna vibe out for a bit. Anyone that doesn't vibe out while they're DJing, well, you're not invited to any of my parties. 
All right, we're feeling it. We're gonna cue this next track in while this one drops. I'm listening in my headphones as well as the booth monitor right now. Okay, now they're in time. And I'm making sure that they're both similar volumes. And this one looks like it's gonna have a breakdown, so I'm gonna start mixing the second track to be the main. See how I'm swapping the basses, the EQs? You can feel that happening. And then, you can slowly fade this out very gradually. And as this next one drops, pull this one out. Woo! And that was really fun. And every time you do something like that, you're gonna have the biggest rush of adrenaline ever. And I feel that right now. This is how I stay alive in 2020. Just so you guys know, my manager's like sitting to the side and we're, we're reminiscing on times we've messed up during DJ sets. There have been times, and we're gonna talk about things that can go wrong and how to kind of be a problem solver. I will say always have a plan when you're playing a set. Always know all the music that you have in your folder. Like really know where things are situated and make sure that you're, you're you know, where you keep your music is really, really organized. I've had many times where I'm playing a track and I've gotten too distracted and it's gotten to like 10 seconds left on the track and I still don't have anything and um, it's been awkward as all hell. I actually think I posted a video about that um, on my Instagram one time. Don't be like me and make sure that you're really prepared and focused. So if you do find that you're in a pickle and you have run out of time with a track and you haven't decided what your next track is gonna be, like a really easy fix is to, is to look at the BPM and see what it is and try and find on your other decks something that's a similar style or BPM. Say you're playing a house track, go, okay, where can I find another house track? If you're organized, you'll know where to find your house tracks and you can just quickly mix something in. I'm gonna call Garth up and he's gonna show you how he, what he does when he gets out of trouble because he really has a very good plan. If you cannot find a track fast enough, here's a really sick little life hack for you. And it's called looping. It is incredibly boring though. So we're running out of time, 30 seconds left, we still haven't got another song. You can use this in and out loop. <laughs> you can't yawn in the middle of the song. <laughs> You're gonna be here forever. All right, so we're too busy dancing, and the song's about to end. So we can use the in and out buttons to form a loop and it'll just play forever. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. In, two, three, four. Down, 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 And that would just now play forever. You know, short, long, whatever you want, and then you can mix in the next track. All right. See, it's boring for the crowd. Oh no, what do I do? And then you mix. No one knew. 